So hi everybody, it's been a long time since I've done a video, um, but I thought I'd do one right now and show kind of one of my new toys and um, something I've been working on getting up and running. It's not up and running yet, but hopefully it will be by the end of this video. This is a George Haller stove, probably from the turn of the century, late 1800s, early 1900s is my guess. Um, it uh, has three wicks, it's a kerosene stove, and it's it's a pretty neat little contraption. I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit and, and show you how it works. So as you can see, here's the stove a little closer, and I'm going to remove the kettle. Put that away. And I'm going to take off some of the top burners. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of having these, these concentric iron rings is. Maybe it diffuses the heat and tones it down a little bit, uh, or evens it out. I'm not really sure. But I'll show you. Here we go. So first there's this little plate here, um, and then a series of rings. This one says George Haller uh, Ottenson. And then there's two more that come through. Put those away. And uh, beneath that one, there's this one here that's meant, I guess, to put a, a kettle down or a a coffee pot and get a little closer. Let's see the side, fight with the tripod here. And down inside there are these three wicks that uh, can be turned up and down. These have not been burned yet. I think they've been in there for quite a long time. Let me take off these rings. And you can see uh, right here, these come off. And then additionally, this uh, this actually has a little mica window in it. You can see I replaced it. Somebody had put in, I think, some overhead transparency to take the place of it, but I didn't think that was a very good idea around fire. So I cut, I sent off on eBay for some sheet mica and cut it down to size. And uh, now it has a little window. So this comes off. And there's these three wicks here. You can see with uh, some knobs that turn them up and down. I've just now cut them off flush. My, what I've been told to do is to cut or to burn, uh, singe the ends of these before you put kerosene into the tank. Uh, there's a lot of wick inside this tank. You can see somebody bought some long wicks and I was advised not to cut them unless absolutely necessary. May as well store it there for the future. But this is heavy iron with an enamel top. You can see the winders and advancers in there. And then this tank comes out, I guess, to for cleaning. It's just basically a, an enamelware pan with a holder. So what my hope to do now is to do as I was told by uh, some very uh, knowledgeable people on ClassicCampStoves.com, a really cool site. Uh, I'm going to singe the top of these and then I'm going to fill it with some kerosene and let it sit for about a half an hour for the kerosene, wait for the kerosene to soak in and, and go up into the wick and then uh, light her up and see what, what it does. So I'll do my singeing here in front of you. I'm sure that you'll be highly entertained by that. I said not to let it get down below the, um, down into the main part of the wick, just the ends. I guess that helps somehow with uh, the way that the wick process is fuel. It's kind of, I was going to do this out in the backyard, but it's kind of a, it started to rain on me, so I moved it into the front porch. Hopefully my neighbors won't think I'm nuts. This is not highly uh, dynamic for television, so you'll have to forgive me, but I guess if you like stoves like this, you're probably okay with a slower pace of life. I know I am. That's partly why I got this. Uh, we have spared the air days here in Oakland, California, which are not my favorite thing in the world, but I figure I can burn this on the stove or on the, on the hearth and enjoy a little bit of fire. There's a great book that I found called Backlog Studies. It's from 1887, at least the copy I have is. And uh, it sounds like it could be written by me. It's a man railing against the... Um, the use of fake fires 
in the home, saying that uh, how much a, a family is brought together around a real fire and a real hearth, doing poking sticks in the fire and turning over logs and um, playing with sparks. I, I think I may have told this in a prior video. I had kindergarten, I teach kindergarten. Um, students that were absolutely unaware of what ashes were um, and what uh, soot was. <clears throat> These are words that are just not part of their world anymore. There's no ashtrays, there's no cigarettes, probably thankfully, but there's uh, it's kind of odd to me to have a generation of students who aren't familiar with the concepts of soot and ash and flame and embers and coals and uh, that sort of thing. So I do think that we gain a lot by being around the, these elemental um, substances like fire and water and air. And the more we live in houses that are made of foreign substances made to look like stone and foreign substances made to look like wood pressed recycled bottles or whatever our, our new decks are made out of, uh, I'm told they're, they're better and far superior to act the actual thing, but I certainly feel a distance from the natural world. And a lot of people joke about the hipsters and their tendency to have these manly lumberjack beards but not be able to change a tire and uh, to weather hurt feelings. <laughs> uh, so this is part of my attempt to keep that sort of thing alive. Wow, you can really smell the, the soot. I hope I haven't gone too far. We'll see. Uh, either this will be great or it'll be not great. And I'll be back to the drawing board and cut off a little bit more wick and keep going. Because I understand once you put the fuel into the mixture, you can't singe it like this because they will just light. So it's kind of glowing. I'll bring it down. There's a little bit here. Hmm. I read another thing on an article about putting potpourri essential oils into the kerosene. I think that's the advanced level and a little bit girly, but that's all right. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I think we're singed. What I'm going to do now is let those sit for a little bit. I'm going to go and get the bottle of kerosene and pour some in, but not too much because I do have to carry this wobbly thing. You can see it didn't screw on or seal in any way. But the, the hope is that I'll be carrying it back into the house and not pouring it all over my foot and the carpet. Um, anyway, I'll be back soon and show you the rest. All right, so here I am. I've got the kerosene bottle, and I've got the, the top off and the tank ready to go. Um, I will pour it in here just a little bit. Hopefully not spilling too much. And I'm only going to go maybe about a third, I suppose, or a half. Quite a while since I've used kerosene because I live in 2017 and it's not part of the daily life, at least not yet. So I'm going to let that Let's put these in. Hopefully. All right, so it's in there. We've got some spillover right here, and it's going to have to just evaporate, I think. But I'm going to let it sit for about a half an hour. I'll probably wipe up this tiny puddle here because we don't need flammable liquid all over the place. And I'm going to kind of restructure it, put it back together. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's that. up higher. Um, apparently these wicks are very difficult to uh, get into the, the, the hole. Somebody said if you put duct tape on the inside end and then kind of suck it down through with the wheels it goes a lot easier. But, and people were speculating as to how that was done in the days before duct tape. Anyway, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit, and uh, then hopefully it will uh, 
will have soaked in and be ready to fire up. Thanks. All right, so it's been about a half an hour, and I think the kerosene's probably had enough time to soak in. I, I can smell it. I'm hoping that's not going to smell up the house. I can't imagine the rest of my family is going to allow this thing in there if it smells too much, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to lift this off and light the wicks. Well, that's a lot of smoke and fire. So let's bring that way, 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 way down where there's smoke so I think this one's got a tendency to it smells great I think to be honest I wonder if those wicks need to have some corners tipped off put that down warm but not awful. It's very bright. Let's see, we'll put this top on now. I'm not going to put the kettle on because there's no water in it. I'm definitely going to want to let that cool so I bring it inside. Back it off a little bit and see how we look. That's pretty charming, I have to say. Kind of glowing. Turn this up a little bit. It's much brighter than I expected it to be. That really glows nicely. I've got this neat little tool that I bought. Uh, a couple of years ago off of Etsy. Not, I don't remember who made it, unfortunately. And I wasn't even sure what I was going to use it for, but I thought, that's pretty neat. So I can use that for cooking on parts, I suppose. Yeah, that's real nice. Well, I'm going to have to play with that inside the house in a little bit. I'll let her burn for a little while here and see... That's pretty good heat. It's not, wouldn't want to sit on it or touch it, but uh, yeah. Okay, well, I will uh, test it out for a little bit longer and then maybe bring her inside and try to cook some water. I think the next thing I'm going to do is some boil tests on it. Maybe that'll be a separate video. Anyway, my quest for a, a warmer, glowing life um, is underway. I hope you enjoyed the video, and maybe you've, if you've got similar stoves or things like that at home, I'd sure love to see those. Thanks. Take care. Bye. All right. Well, I thought maybe just as a little prologue, I might want to show putting the fire out, because that is kind of important sometimes. I'm going to try by blowing and turning the wicks down. So turn the wicks way down. And blow. And it's out. Well, that was easier than I thought. All right, I'll let her sit for a bit, cool off, and now that's the end of the video. Thanks, take care.